Welcome to the Lights Camera Pro Podcast, where we interview entertainment pros about their careers and how they became successful in the industry. The secrets to their success here every week. Here's your host, Sean Ventura. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Lights Camera Pro Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Ventura, and I just want to say go to Apple Podcasts and Spotify and subscribe, rate, and review. We also have movie reviews and television show reviews. Okay, today's guest is um, a great guy. His name is Thomas Cantley, and he is an actor, uh, director, cinematographer. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Lights, Camera, Pro Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Ventor, and today we are here with Thomas Cantley. He is a director and a producer. Uh, thanks for doing this, Thomas. Well, yeah, I mean, thanks thanks for having me. This is a uh, lucky run-in. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is cool that you're doing this. Um, so you are a director and a producer, and I will just ask you the first question. How did you know? When did you know? I mean, were you five? Were you in high school? Were you in college? When did you know that you wanted to be a director and a producer? Well, you know, it's it's funny. It started quite, quite young um, where my mom... Uh, sometimes it starts from, you know, moms and parents living vicariously Mm -hmm. (laughs) through you. So kind of my mom, um, started putting me when I was younger, when when I finished my kind of awkward phase, well, I went through many awkward phases, but at one point when I was like this small window where I was pretty, I was cute. Um, (laughs) (laughs) she, uh, put me into commercials and, and uh, did some like a little bit of TV acting as as a child, and um, I realized I was super passionate about like watching the people behind the camera, and that's kind of where my first love kind of came in when I was around like ten to thirteen, and then kind of just kind of took a little bit of a break because I got heavy into sports. And uh, oh, what sports? What were you doing? I was a pretty competitive hockey player. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Through my, I was when I was 17, I was drafted um, until I ended up having three three concussions with the Florida Panthers. Oh, wow. And what position do you? Uh, I was right wing. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, so you're in there. You're getting knocked around. Um, yeah. All right. So, so you, you are on sets and you're seeing the cameras and the lights and you're like, this is cool. Uh, where do you go from there? Where do you uh, go next? Well, you know, it's uh, my mom wanted me to do the typical college route. You know, she didn't truly understand or support like kind of she wanted me to be an actor in front. But when I started to like really want to take pursuit behind the camera, she didn't really understand it. So she just said to me, she goes, hey, Thomas, to have a sustainable career, you need to like do uh, get your bachelor of arts or something like mm-hmm. just get, go to college for four years. And, you know, I kind of, I was always a rebel. So I just kind of said, all right, fine. You're going to stick me in college. Then this isn't where I want to be. I'm going to drink the money away <laughs> <laughs> and kind of get kicked out of school until you listen to me. And then I'm going to go to film school. So nice. I only lasted two years and until my, my, my mom was tired of wasting money and she said, all right, fine, let's, let's put you in film school. So I ended up going to, uh, my dad's from the U S and my mom's Canadian. So I'm dual uh-huh. and I ended up going to Vancouver film school. So oh, to cool. kind of kick my, kick my, uh, career. That's kind of where it all started was in my, when I was 20. Awesome. And did you just take like a overall filmmaker program or what was your major? Yeah. I took a full intensive one year program of just, the foundations of everything, touching into animation, just every single mm-hmm. department and area. And that's what kind of, you know, kind of got my focus of just kind of figuring out where I wanted to be. And and at that point, I, I truly actually wanted to be a DP, a camera operator. And then okay. that's where my kind of career took its path for quite some time. Nice. So do you get a job as a as a DP or a videographer <laughs> somewhere to start out after college? What happens next? Yeah. So it was funny. I got a, I got a funny story when I was going to school and because I wasn't a, a typical, you know, learner, I, you know, I mean, like any of us creatives, a lot of us have ADHD and, <laughs> <laughs> and I had dyslexia. So right. even when I was in film school, it was still, it was very technical. It was very grades and um, orientated. And I just, I wasn't 
you know, the, the grading system would happen like what you were able to do with your final projects or were based on your grades. So I, as my passion was directing, I didn't get to direct any of my projects. So at that point I was like, screw this. And I was just going to like carry out my, carry out my degree. But then mm -hmm. I ended up getting an opportunity to work on a pretty big movie, um, which is called Battle in Seattle, which was directed by Stuart Townsend. Uh, Shirley Theron was in it. Joshua Jackson would be Harrelson, uh, the whole nine yards. Really? And yeah. And, um, Stuart became, Townsend, the drummer or no, Stuart, Stuart Townsend, Townsend, the actor, the actor okay. from Vampire. I think it was Vampire right. Diaries. So, yeah. Yeah. Vampire something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, you know, he was doing his own first first indie. It was only a one million budget. He had all these actors because they were buddies, and Charlize Theron was his wife. So, right, um, I remember that. Yeah, and uh, so I ended up being his assistant, and I missed a lot of my school. And I ended up getting called in by the dean, saying, "Thomas, we're going to have to uh, terminate you from the program because uh, because of your attendance and your grades are, are lacking." And mm. And so I had to go back to Stuart and I said, Stuart, I got, I got to leave. I got to finish the program. I'm going to, my mom's going to kill me. And he goes, dude, I need you. He goes, this is where you're going to be learning. This is, this is how you're going to gain your experience. He's like, let me, let me figure something out. So he ended up writing a letter. Him and Charlize dropped me off at the front of the school and came in and was Stuart came in with me and, and to do his teacher said, just don't kick this kid out of school. He's such a hard worker. He's just an awesome guy and I need him. <laughs> wow. That's cool. So, man. Yeah. So it was kind of like that really, I just fell in love with behind the, you know, Kevin Smith went to my school. That was one of the, one of the reasons why I ended up wanting to go there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, I was, I was in the self-discovery mode of where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. And, and that experience with Stuart and just kind of working so closely with the director and, and the actors and everything, and just really shaped my passion for the industry and realized that school was great. I got my foundation, which was amazing. Um, but you know, the onset experience is just the absolute truth of where, of truly where you learn it all. Yeah, Absolutely. I agree. So, um, another movie or do you go on and get a job? What's next? Yeah. I, I kind of hopped around, um, PA just trying mm -hmm. to, um, insert myself anywhere possible. You know, like, you know, the biggest thing is, is I recommend to people always is just your personality is so important and who you are and where you put yourself out. So just always marketing yourself constantly because a lot of crews, they'll bring the same people along. So I end up kind of hopping around to a lot of shows from good luck, Chuck, uh, PA and working my way up, um, as a location, location manager and, uh, working on, uh, the L word, not the reality show, but the actual TV show. Right. Um, and I was on that for a couple seasons. Um, you know, worked my way up to an AD. I was a trainee AD then. And then I just started like, looking into the camera department and shadowing some camera ops and stuff like that. Just kind of trainee training there. I didn't go union, um, but just was like kind of, you know, I was kind of out of shaping my career and realizing that I didn't want to be in the AD PA, you know, PA world. Mm. Um, and that I was really interested in the camera department. And then that's what kind of took my career to the next level where I ended up deciding to move to New York city. Nice. And um, leave Canada and take a giant step and right. and and take the next opportunity there where, where the rest of my career for 15 years was in New York. Very cool. And I'll just throw in a quick little PA story because I was a PA in New York. Uh, I was an actor in the theater, but I was trying to work in movies and I did some gripping. And um, But I was a PA for a while, got up at five in the morning to shoot a Buster Rhymes video. <laughs> and it was actually, I think it was at a strip club, actually. And, um, you know, everybody set up. He was supposed to be there somewhere around noon, maybe one o'clock. And he showed up at midnight. <laughs> so oh, everybody, <laughs> everybody got double pay. We didn't get out of there till like eight the next morning. It was yeah. insane. Some of us had other jobs to go to. It was insanity. But the guy showed up about 11 hours late for his music, his music video. It wasn't even like someone else. It, uh, it's just a funny um, little story. So where is, do you go from there? Yeah. So for me, it was like New York is just a totally different beast. You know, any place you go to, are you from New York? 
Uh, no, Massachusetts, but I was there for 12 years. And yeah, I, I can tell you that everything moves faster in New York for sure. No, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that really, you know, grew me as um, a producer, essentially, you know, because mm -hmm. when I got there, I was in the generation of like when DSLRs like just were like coming out. Like, yeah. I think my first camera I ended up purchasing because I was like, okay, I need to do it all. I ended up getting the Canon 40D. Yep. Um, but I also at the time had the Panasonic. Um, what was it? The P2. I had the P2. Okay. And, um, so I ended up getting these cameras, had no idea what I was doing. Cause I was like, everything kind of was just thrown out from film school. Cause now I'm like, here I am the real deal. I'm like, shit, you Gotta know, figure it out. <laughs> lenses. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Lenses and everything. And then I ended up, um, you know, because I was in that generation too. So like 2007, 2008 was that transition of those cameras where a lot of people were shooting photo video. And I ended up doing a lot of photo work in the beginning because I ended up, um, I was just hanging out during fashion week at mm. Bryant park. And I saw this one photographer guy and his name was Rodini and he was shooting for interview magazine. And he was like a pretty big, pretty big dude, um, in the industry there still is. And I just went up to him and I said, Hey man, I got, I got my, um, my P2, I got my Canon. And I was just like, can I just come shadow you? Can I just like, I don't even know you, but like, I'll hold your bags. I'll do whatever. Like if you need a second camera, like I'm, I'm here, like, you know, I have experience. And he's like, I was like, you don't have to pay me anything. I'll just for the whole week, I'll just, I'll come and shadow you. And he goes, sure. All right. <laughs> so just this awesome dude. I went in and he goes like, all right, can you take the gearing? Can you sit in the pit? So I ended up here. I am like, have my cannon around my neck, you know, have my camera carrying his stuff in the pit and, you know, shooting, um, Lacoste and, and just right. while he's doing it, he's showing me stuff. I'm there shooting a little bit of like another angle for him. And, and he's just teaching me things. And, and he's like, dude, I love how you're just on your toes. You're quick, you're ready to learn. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I'll come here every day for you and, and do whatever you need me to do dump footage. And I just did that with him. And I created a relationship with him where he kind of, I ended up being his camera assist and jumping around to photo shoots, working with anthropology. And mm -hmm. I ended up working my way up, um, shooting stills and video for anthropology. I went from, you know, um, uh, a, a third camera assist to all the way to shooting, um, for the client. Very and, cool. and then in that transition point, I, I ended up really working in that fashion world where I ended up doing doubling up shooting video as well. So a lot of these big fashion designers, I ended up getting on a show called project runway in the fourth season and started shooting a lot of behind the scenes and, and just kind of creating my own business now at this point in confidence and notoriety um, in the fashion world. Hmm. And what was that like working on that show? Because everybody's seen that show. There's a million, yes. like 40 seasons or something. 20 yeah, seasons. Yeah, it's so funny. Like I was, <laughs> I was in the season. The season that I came in was when um, Christian Milian is like now he's the judge and kind of runs okay. the show now. Like I shot him before he was nobody. You know, I remember, you know, being there and he was just so shy and quiet and, and, some of the other artists I got to work with, I carried on careers with them were Kevin Christiana and mm -hmm. uh, he is a relationship and partnership. He did, um, I did a video for him on the side with Kmart and um, Adam Levine doing some like side DP work for them, mm -hmm. um, doing their collaboration line for Kmart. But like, I mean, I did about four seasons of Project Runway. It was, it was a pretty cool show, like just working with all these designers and then also on the side, like kind of being in that, place as well where you know video was so hot and that kind of behind the scenes raw little indie look of like getting ready all that stuff mm. was i was in that whole beginning stage and i was that guy you know i ended up working also for justin timberlake for his william rass line doing all the behind the scenes videos stuff like that for fashion week daily and all that cool did you ever meet justin or did you just see him I did. I met him. I met him. <laughs> Is it okay to speak on candidly? Am I? Yeah. Am I okay? yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I was backstage and I was shooting his stuff and, and, um, anyways, I was just standing there waiting, like, you know, I think I was putting in a card and Justin was like looking at me, giving me this dirty look. And he's like, who's, who's this guy? And his designer was like, that's Thomas who shoots all your backstage. Anyways, he's just, he, he was kind of like, you know, like, who is this guy? Who's this like, right. you know, why he, is he, he taking pictures had, of me? 
Yeah, he's like, who's this douche? Like, you know, but um, but yeah, he's just, I mean, not the friendliest. I mean, you know, he just kind of gave me a nod in there. I mean, he's just, right. he's got big things going on and he's doing his thing. But it's, you know, to me, he didn't have the, out of all the celebrities that I've worked with and Matt, he wasn't the, the nicest, I would say. Right. Right. We just, we just, uh, I, I just talked to somebody who worked with Catherine Zeta Jones and they were like, uh, she's not the most approachable person. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, we'll just leave that there. That's cool. <laughs> we're not going to go any deeper than that. Um, she's, yeah. but you know, she's a legend and she has an oh, entourage yeah. of the whole thing. But, oh, yeah. uh, yeah. So that's interesting just to hear that story about what happened to you with him. So what's next? Is the pilot next or is there some other gigs or? So, so yeah, I mean, a lot of it was, um, you know, I just, I went to doing these, doing these music videos and working and then don't want to take you too far off course, but I ended up, um, you know, I have a strong passion for documentaries. So I ended up getting hired at Vice Media. Oh, cool. And I was a producer at Vice there, independently producing and shooting and directing um, some like smaller for the online sections. Okay. Um, nothing that went streaming or anything, but it was more like the online portions. Like you're in New Yorker, probably in the same time when I was there too. And it was like when AOL, you know, yeah. was around and they had their like live page stuff. So I was like, a lot of my stuff was for um, web on Vice. Right. And, um, and then at that point I ended up getting... Um, testicular cancer oh um yeah so wow. hit me out of nowhere you know i was 26 years old and you know all this that happened here is you know in this, this time span of six years um everything that i'm explaining to is mm -hmm. just you know new york just goes so fast and then i you know that kind of set me back a little bit but then i put myself as a um as a subject so i ended up creating a awareness campaign, pushing a giant ball across America, which I got a ton of media coverage and you may or may not have heard about it, but, mm. um, I was in every single me news media outlet and it was a documentary called Mr. Ballsy. And, um, that was kind of my first like big, big independent project that I did on my own. And mm. then, which, which then How did you of, shoot it? Did you have someone with you or did you just like set up these extension arm cameras to <laughs> extreme selfie cameras yeah I had gopros and then i had um, a buddy of mine who was with boom picture do you know boom pictures have you heard of them no. in new york so the guy there a buddy of mine matt ginsburg who f created the show inked um okay. i ended up kind of going to him and i was like you know kind of always a hustler just kind of pitching my concepts and stuff and i said hey man like i just need to come up with a cool idea to you know i have cancer like i don't want to do the same story that everyone else does, you know, um, just typical documentation. And he goes, so him and I collaborated on getting this giant six foot ball. And he said, and you know, he's like, you really need to draw people in. So we kind of collaborated on the idea of just starting from LA to New York and just doing kind of like a Craigslist show. Like we had to organically get people and, and we had to completely rely on food, uh, shelter and, um, travel all through the kindness of people. And right. cause I had no money and I was like, all right, this is a great idea because then I have no money so I can shoot this whole thing right. and do it, do it all in kind in that way. So it's like indie filmmaking at the most. And then a buddy of mine who him and I went to film school together, he shoots for amazing race. And he was actually, he's originally from Malaysia and he does the Australian shows and stuff. He's like, I got a 10 year visa, dude, I'll come down and, and shoot your tour for you. So. Oh, uh, cool. There you go. That's yeah. nice that he did that. That's yeah. awesome, man. Um, is there somewhere people can see that documentary? Uh, right now we're doing a recut on it. Um, it is called Mr. Ballsy, but we will resurfacing it again because it's just, it's kind of like that. I forget what documentary it was about a guy who, um, a guy who ended up taking like 20 years to finish a doc. And then that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like, you know, <laughs> 30, 37 and we, I did a, a small release version before mm -hmm. and I wasn't happy with it. And then, you know, that, and then now it's 2015, it was 2015 when I did another cut of it. And then now it's like, finally I'm doing another new cut in 2020. <laughs> so hey like man. This. Yeah. I've made a bunch of short films and re-edited and with these podcasts, it's hard to let them go. It's like, oh, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to fix that. And at some point, you got to just move on. Yeah. You that's know, it's true. It's tough to let stuff go. But maybe come back later and do yeah. something with it. So is this where we get into the pilot now? <laughs> Very close. I'll speed up to okay. you. Um, no, somewhere. Fine. 
So when we were into New York, uh, I ended up my wife. I ended up meeting my wife, who um, is a celebrity producer. Uh, she was at NBC. Okay. Um, she's an Emmy Award winner, and she's probably someone you might you might want to interview. But yeah. she's um, she's big time. So have you heard of the William Esper Studios in New York? I have. Yeah. Yeah. So she was one of the originals there. Like her class was. Um, you know, I'll leave a lot for 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 another time for you to interview her but i mean she would be awesome just because she's amazing but she was one of the um her class was amy schumer and a bunch of other major celebrities and there's books about her like bill esper who ended up passing away um recently was and and, it's an acting class yeah it's an acting studio it's like the top acting studio that's what i thought yeah so but um i ended up meeting her um she was a producer at nbc and we got married and now have a, a son but we said we wanted to move out of New York city and we're like, where's the next spot? So that was Atlanta. So she ended up getting a gig to do, um, Delta, Del- a Delta gig. Mm. And I ended up, and then at the same time, we also got another gig to do the NBC Olympics. And so nice. I was directing the commercials, uh, for, for Rio, the Rio Olympics. So we ended up moving here and, um, so she was doing Delta and at the same time doing Olympics and then we were pregnant and well, she was, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then I ended up hopping around to a few places doing Home Depot, writing scripts for Home Depot. Then I mm-hmm. got on um, Coca-Cola and I was doing the, you know, producing the FIFA tournament and then the music video with Jason Derulo. So, and now I'm at the pilot. So I just kind of gave you a okay. little sped okay. up version. Sure. Um, but, you know, and so in 2018, yeah, we did, um, my wife and I had this, she had this really cool story where it was about a cult and she was in this cult. And I said, we have to turn this into a, a TV show. And, you know, and she said, all right, do, do it. And because I've just, now you've heard my career, I've, I've had my hand in like literally every single pot right. and I built a great network in, in Atlanta here. And so um, because of the acting studio that she's connected to and stuff like that, one of our dear friends who's on the show Ozark, he's one of the main characters on Ozark. Now he's on Outsiders is Mark Menchaca. Mm-hmm. Um, he what played, character is he? Because I've seen. He, have you seen Ozark? Yeah. So he plays Russ. He plays the bearded uncle who ends up getting killed. Oh, is that? He, I saw he, the first two seasons though. Is okay, it? Yeah. So he was he was the gay guy. He, he had the gay interaction with the cop. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yep. So now he's the lead on Outsiders. Um, he has a shaved head. He looks completely different. Hmm. Um, and Jason Bateman states him as like his top actor. Well, he's he's one of my wife's really good friends. And so we wrote him as the lead because, um, you know, I said to him, I said, oh, my God, he would be an amazing call leader. And my wife was like, OK, we can only we're probably we probably won't be able to get him for very long. So I wrote the whole entire script based on just using the whole pilot based on um, not revealing him mm. until the very end and just a VL and a silhouette. And so building the whole script up. So we ended up, you know, building a whole entire 60 person crew shooting locally using camera ready program um, and shooting our whole entire pilot, doing it. Crazy legs ended up doing, you know, an editor from crazy legs ended up doing the post-production right. Um everything. And then we ended up, my executive producer, um, ended up having a great connection with Danny Sussman, who represents quite a bit of celebrities. And, and currently right before COVID, we were in negotiations with, um, a guy who is the founder and owner of, um, Crack Roll, the streaming network, who's wanted to buy our pilot. So now we're kind of in that, um, phase right now where we're just kind of in lieu where, you know, everything kind of froze and just kind of waiting for it to to pick up again because they're interested in buying our pilot. But now we're like, okay, what's, what's the move? <laughs> and can I just ask you like the tone of the show? Is it like the following where it's creepy and there's murder or is it like a comedy or somewhere yeah. m- more so like Ozark? What dark it's, it's, um, how does it, it's more like, um, like girls. Um, okay. So it's, it's kind of like girls meets transparent a little bit. Like mm-hmm. it's like kind of messed up. Um, but a lot of humor, you know, it's just really dark humor. It's not laugh out loud, funny, but it's like more shocking humor. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, we have a couple, 
Yeah, so it's it's a little bit it's it's shot a little bit more brighter and vibrant. I can also I can send you a private um, link as well to the cool. final pilot. Yeah. But it's um, yeah, it's meant I'd love to, be to see it. Um, and so you're just waiting to hear because of COVID. Yep. Yep. That's very cool, man. I mean, not many people do that. So I've always wanted to do a feature. I made four shorts. All yep. right. So let's wrap it up with um, any advice that you have for the younger people. I'm sure you have a ton of advice because you have this school and you've had a, I mean, you're 37, but you've had a long career. You've done a lot of different stuff. Um, what is your advice for people who want to work in the uh, film and TV industry? I would just say it's, I mean, it's like our industry is like no other and there's any time you can make a job transition if you're someone that's in a job that you're unhappy with right now. I mean, it's just, it's about making that giant leap and taking that opportunity, whether it's you have that regular job and you want to do something on the side and you just want to create art and you need that balance, but it's like just so important, you know, like Tony Robbins says, you mentioned earlier, it's just, it's like, it's just, it's so important to do it, do it makes you happy and do what you love. And, you know, in our industry, all it takes is, is drive passion and heart. Everything else is trainable. You know, you can, right. you can learn it all through those aspects, but having a vision, um, is just, we all have our own stories, you know, and every story has, you know, has an opportunity to, you know, see the light of day, you know, and with these platforms that we have, it's just, I would just say is like create content, put yourself out there, take risks and don't, um, don't limit yourself because, you know, this life is the only one we got. Yeah, absolutely. I was just talking to a, a woman yesterday who's a life coach and she does, has her own photography business and she also has a podcast and, and she works with a lot of people who are just like, I can't do it. You know, I can't leave my job. I can't, my kids have soccer games. I can't, I can't, I can't. And she just left her company to a friend who was a photographer and for two years traveled on the road with her husband, who's a musician and lived in a sprinter van. And, hmm. and she absolutely loved it and it changed her life and it recharged her creativity. Mm -hmm. And my girlfriend went to Paris and lived for three months because she got laid off and something she always wanted to do. And I've done stuff like that. So it's like, you have to do the things you want to do in your lifetime whether it's make a feature film or go live in Paris because you only have one life, man. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome, man. Um, this has been great. Uh, thanks so much for doing this. And uh, it's so cool. I had no, I, I knew you did the school and, and the pilot, but I know, had no idea you did all that other stuff with the, the fashion shows and, and the school sounds really cool. So thanks for doing this, Thomas. Thank you, man. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And I'll, I'll promote any way, any way I can for your podcast. Yeah. Share it or, um, do whatever on, on social media to get it out there. But, uh, I will definitely, you are 28th and I'm on 10, <laughs> so it'll be a while, but I'm actually posting two a week. So cool. Um, and hopefully I can continue that, uh, because my freelance has stopped for a while. And uh, also, let me know if you want my wife too, cause she's, um, her stories are like, you think she's got, I mean, she was the producer on Martha Stewart when Martha Stewart went to jail. Like she's, she has. Yeah, absolutely. So is she an actress or? So she's an actress that, um, slash producer. Oh, okay. Actress so, slash producer. Um, but. Very cool. But, and what's her name? Ashley Cantley. Um, so if you look up her on LinkedIn or whatever, or, right. um, yeah, She's no, very... absolutely. I mean, I can tell you that I will. So I will text you in a little bit. I'm going on vacation next week. Oh, My nice. girlfriend just got a new job and she needs to get out of the house. So, um, but we're going to take a week off and then I will contact her, contact you and you can give me her phone number and we'll set up a time to do an interview. Cause I love, love, love talking to actors. Cause I acted for 10 years and can totally relate. Oh, you will love that then. And then, yeah. And, and let me, um, and yeah, when you get back to, I can think of some other people cause our, we have a pretty big Rolodex and if, you know, yeah, you send me some texts. I've actually met some incredible people, um, through other guests and also through Facebook friends. Um, I've met awesome. people who worked on that 70s show, people who nice. worked on family guy and the Simpsons, um, a guy who just, uh, was a showrunner for the new show Bruise Brothers. Um, nice. 
just so many people, man. I can't even go through them all. That uh, this guy who just worked on, he's the uh, um, art director for Tenant, Christopher Nolan's new movie, and he's working oh, on. Nice. Uh, the Rock's new movie, Black Adam, for DC, and he's worked. Oh, he's cool. worked on The Walking Dead. I mean, uh, on and on. Hunger Games, like I mean, really interesting stories, man. So cool, um, and uh, it's just really great to do these interviews because I'm learning stuff from people, and um, and I think what I'm creating is not to compete with your school, but. I just realized that this is like a great resource or will be in the future when I have 50, 100, 200 of these for people. Oh, I want to be an actor. Oh, I want to be a DP. Mm -hmm. Just go listen to that interview and you mm -hmm. get so much great advice and, and stories about what it's like to be an actor on TV or what it's like to be a DP in film. Mm -hmm. So no, totally. Yeah. And that's not, and you know, by any means there's no competition, you know, I yeah, mean, I mean that's it's a the, totally different thing. Yeah. This so is like a, you know, a half hour, hour long walk with your dog or while you're taking a run or something, <laughs> this isn't competing with a school at all, but yeah, I'll definitely interview your wife if she's interested and anybody yeah, else course. that you know, send it along in a text. That would be great, man. I totally appreciate it. Yeah. And this awesome, has been man. cool, man. You have a great day. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, you too. Love what you're doing. All right. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Lights Camera Pro Podcast, where entertainment pros talk about how they made their dream into a career. Go to Apple Podcasts and Spotify and subscribe, rate, and review. Thanks to Bob Jurgens for the Rock and VO and Joseph McDade for the music. We also have movie reviews and television show reviews. Thanks so much. See you next time.